This used to have grapes on it, but they're gone from lack of attention. That's my old canoe, which of course I can't use anymore for four or five years. And that's all that's left of the rose garden. It's mostly weeds now. It was like living in paradise for 32 years. John Allen Lee is leaving paradise. He's 80 years old and lately he hasn't been doing so well. A heart attack five years ago was the first sign of his future. I began to fall much more often and injured myself. You know, my cracked ribs for weeks to repair, and so the garden just became a burden rather than a joy. Kairos is a Greek word that means opportune time. It's an idea that's defined John's whole life. Now he's putting it into practice as he packs up for one final move. My childhood friends have been with me a long time. So they're going on to the last stop. He's moving from a house he loves to a rented condo where he plans to spend the last months of his life. Well, here we go, into the light. He's not terminally ill. He simply feels his life is complete and he doesn't want to push his luck. He intends to end his life in the coming months. I've met more plants I like than people. <laughs> oh, there's the end of the roll. How well timed. <laughs> Yeah, it's been quite a life. That's another reason why I can be quite easy about going because I've had an absolutely wonderful life. Life started off a bit rocky for John Allen Lee. His parents abandoned him as a boy and he grew up in foster care. In the 1950s, he married Jean, a fellow Christian activist and they had two children, Peter and Susan. His marriage came to an end when he realized he was gay. He became a trade union leader and then a sociology professor at the University of Toronto. The decision to end his life when he felt the time was right was made long ago, says his son Peter. But I do remember as a teenager him saying that he didn't expect to live past 65, didn't want to live past 65, and that he had actually opted out of the pension plan at the university, which was superb. Despite his early predictions, John found plenty of reasons to carry on past age 65, but now he says the time has come. I think you have to say goodbye at various times in your life to people things you love, places you love, and move on. The Buddha said that uh, the main source of human suffering is just three little words, which in English translate as just one more. You know, just one more hit, one more beer, one more orgasm, one more month. <laughs> People don't know when to give up and say, that was good, that was enough. John's philosophy that you choose the time of your death to avoid physical decline is controversial, but it's not novel. Centuries ago, the Greek philosopher Socrates famously welcomed an early death, telling his followers, he was avoiding the worst part of life. More recently, the Dutch Parliament debated giving seniors over 70 the right to euthanasia, regardless of illness. It's a philosophy known as completed life or rational suicide. 
Carrie Bowman is a bioethicist at the University of Toronto who spent many years working on the front lines in Toronto hospitals. He's concerned the philosophy doesn't take into account that people change. Although we are one person over the course of a lifetime, we evolve and we change. And does that 80-year-old fully, fully have insight into the 85-year-old version of ourselves, or often with much larger age ranges, 40 and 70, or these types of things. Are, and what I've learned from experience is I have seen patients that say they want to go no further and have tremendous fears, and when they have, have actually said, this is okay. I can still do this and that, and I appreciate the new day. Beautiful music for a crazy world. That's what we have 24-7 on the new classical, 96.3 out there. What is a beautiful watermelon? John Allen Lee has made it clear to his new landlord. His stay in this condo won't be a long one. Definitely don't want to fall. It's the worst thing that can happen to an old man, an old woman. Yet it's important to him to make the place feel like home. He hasn't picked a date to end his life, but he feels an increasing sense of urgency. His eyesight is failing, his asthma is getting worse, and about of pancreatitis a couple years ago laid him low. All signs, he says, that he needs to pick a date. You don't want to go too quickly. It's a Goldilocks problem. Not too soon. But if you wait too long and you end up in care, they won't let you make that choice anymore. If I ended up in a hospital or even a nursing care home, I would be prevented from making that choice. And I know people for whom that happened. And they are cautionary tales for me. What would you say to people who, who, who suggest you're giving up? Giving up what? I've done everything I wanted to. I'm ready to go. Why keep hanging on? I'm enjoying life as much as I can with what I've got left, but I don't have to say just one more. I can be satisfied. I can say it's been great, it's enough. We showed Carrie Bowman portions of our interview with John to get his reaction. You know, when I look to the video with John, uh, he's challenging a taboo. And, and the taboo is death comes when it comes. Um, and we don't choose these things, um, especially if you're not dying of something. And it's also the whole question of do we have an obligation to live for other people? And many people feel we absolutely do. So I think these kinds of conversations, um, they, they upset people, they offend some people. But I really think we, we just have to, you know, grit our teeth and move forward with these kinds of conversations. And when you talk to older people, many, many older people are not all that spooked by these conversations. They are staring down these issues and welcome conversations on this. I'm not going to say all, but many do. It is. <clears throat> John is taking each friend out for a final dinner. Their choice, his treat, a chance to say goodbye. Hello. Yes, sure. You're going to choose the fish restaurant? Fine, okay. That's great. You choose it. We'll go. I'll see you at 4.30. That's tonight's guest just asking if I'm okay with fish. He wanted to throw a farewell party, but some of his friends weren't comfortable with how he planned to die. Would you say you're depressed? No, no, not at all, quite the reverse. I've told my son, for example, that when I get the money from the sale of my house, he's not getting it all. It'll be difficult to spend a thousand dollars a day but I've got plans. What if, what if someone called you selfish? Oh, I've been called that too, often. Self-centered, self-preoccupied, self-promoting. I'm not that. 
I'm is, not is ambitious, it, but I'm it, certainly. Is it being selfish to 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 take yourself prematurely away well, who from? Who says those? it's prematurely? It's a question of whose life it is. It's my life, only my life, nobody else's, not even my son's. His son Peter is a professor in London, England. The two have always been extremely close. Peter told his father long ago that he didn't agree with his plans, even reminded him of the theory of another Greek philosopher, Aristotle. That happiness is fulfilled desires over total desires. So an easy way is to actually just change your desires to those that you can rationally fulfill and you can be happy and that's even when you are um, not as fit as when you're young. And as all of us grow old, we won't be as fit as when we're young. So we need to adapt and, and change those things that make us have joy in life. John knows his son disagrees with him, and he accepts that. What's harder to accept is that staff at Dying With Dignity also disagree with him. It's an organization John helped found years ago, and he would like staff to be at his side when he dies. But the organization disagrees with his plans and his views that a doctor should be allowed to help him die. Position should be if this person has talked to our counselor and uh, who, who is an, an expert uh, trained in psychiatry um, and shown that they are in full command of their abil ability to make choices, sane, informed choices, uh, then that's all you require. Uh, in my mind is the fact that the person can make an informed consent. Why should they have to have their foot in the grave? Don't you have a concern, I suppose, that, that okay, it wasn't like it was when, it, when you were 40, but that there is beauty and, 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 and joy to be had at, at, at in, your, in your elderly years? I'm not making a choice for anyone else. I'm not advocating that people who are suffering because they think they would rather be alive should end it. See, I don't believe in suffering. Any suffering I've ever had to go through has never taught me anything but that I should avoid it next time. Carrie Bowman says John has a right to make this decision for himself, but asking the state to help him die crosses the line. But, you know, people have the state has, you know, dual obligations. They do have the obligation to individual choice and autonomy, but that comes with limits. They have an obligation to the broader population. And I think for a lot of people looking at these kinds of stories of the completed life in the absence of illness, they would see this as a clear statement of, or a clear movement towards the slippery slope. When we return. Because I do have here a suicide note already to sign, mm -hmm. and I have a copy of Final Exit, a little videotape, yes. and a copy of the Right to Die book. Oh yes, it was uh, great fun just biking in the park. Yeah. Here, let me take that and just put it here. As winter approaches, John so has been tidying up his affairs, control. giving away artwork to friends. <laughs> But tonight's dinner is intended so, to straighten up something um, else. Would you like something to drink first? Uh, sure. This friend who asked us to conceal his identity has agreed to be present when John dies, along with another of his friends. Tonight, they're going over final details. After I'm dead, yeah. do you want to simply disappear? Well, there's no reason why you shouldn't. You haven't committed any crime. Right. Um, or, or do you want to be here to explain the process and take the authorities through whatever paper? Because I do have here a suicide note uh -huh. already to sign, uh -huh. and I have a copy of Final Exit, you know, the videotape, uh -huh. yes. and a copy of the Right to Die book. 
is there is there advantage one way or another other than for myself i mean <clears throat> you know for it's not illegal for john's friends to be present so long as they do nothing to assist or encourage him but proving they didn't help him die is another thing some people who have done this have uh, actually taken away all signs of how it was done mm. um, what's your opinion um, it seems to me that it would be better just to make sure that we have not interfered in any way with the equipment you know that we don't have fingerprints that can right. uh, that can uh, implicate us and but then that we stay here to give the answers that are needed you know It was five years ago after his heart attack that John started planning his death. At that time, Peter persuaded him to wait. His father had always been his best friend, but last spring, he accepted his father's wish to die. He was very much worried that he would be incapacitated, in pain, and unable to end his own life due to Canadian legislation. I told him um, that I did not agree with his plans, but it was his choice. Anticipating a final goodbye to his son is for John an emotional moment. But he is resolute. You eventually have to get your kids used to the idea that they don't need you. They can just go it alone. And I'm finished. I don't have a bucket list. I don't have an unfinished agenda. And I can't do a lot of things that were my passions, like canoeing. I can't, go, I can't dig a hole in the garden anymore. Um, so I'm taking Buddha's advice. In early December, John Allen Lee ended his life his two friends at his side. The coroner, police, fire department, and paramedics came. All agreed it was suicide. I think he thought very much how it would affect me. I'm not sure he thought as much as how it would affect his grandchildren. I have not told my children yet that he has taken his own life. They asked, um, how did he die? And I, I said, um, painlessly and, and, and comfortably, which is true. <laughs>